five, four, three, two, one. Happy New Year! And welcome to Become the Teapot. I'm Ian. And so am I. And this is our very first, and for all we know only, bonus episode. This was originally recorded for a news roundup that we were going to use to kick off X month, but that episode ran long, so as we've already recorded it, we thought we would throw it up for you to kickstart the new year. It's a little rougher than our usual content, if you can believe that, and mercifully a lot shorter. But we hope that you enjoy it regardless. Happy New Year. So we're going to kick this year off with a new section called New Year's New News. Now ordinarily we don't do a lot of news on this show because we record two weeks in advance. So eagle-eared viewers may have noticed that we are actually recording this in December so it isn't the new year at all. But recently Disney had their annual give us all your money day. Uh, So (laughs) we have a deluge of Marvel news and we wouldn't be doing our duty as amateur podcasters if we didn't discuss this. So let's start from the top. First of all, there is a WandaVision trailer coming to Disney Plus on the 15th of January. Ian, what did you think of that? Yeah, really good, actually. I do often try and stay away from trailers and spoilers. But, I mean, this, I don't think it gives away too much. It's quite intriguing. Yeah. Yeah, no, I really uh, I really like the look of that. I think it's probably the series I am most looking forward to out of all of them, I would say. Okay. And, and I haven't got long to wait now, so I'm very excited about that. So next up, uh, Elizabeth Olsen from WandaVision is going to be in Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Great title. I know. It's great, isn't it? It's a really sort of uh, Lovecraftian name. It's directed by Sam Raimi and it is also introducing America Chavez, uh, Miss America from the comics, played by Zochi Gomez. So yeah, it's another introduction of a new character there. Do you know much about uh, Miss America? No, actually I don't. Not not at all. <laughs> yeah, she's, she's a relatively new character, so uh, we'll get on to that later. But yeah, another new character being introduced. And apparently we'll also connect WandaVision and Spider-Man 3, which obviously, rumours abound, is going to be hmm. tied to the multiverse in lots of ways. Yeah, a lot of casting news, I guess, came out. I don't know how much is true, but we'll soon see. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of rumours. I mean, what, what are your thoughts on the sort of uh, Spider-Verse side of things? Yeah, I think the Spider-Verse film worked really well. Love it. If they can pull off something like that within the MCU, which I'm sure they can, you know, only time will tell if that works and how well that works really is the question. Yeah, I'm excited to see what they do with it. I'm a little bit hesitant. I feel like they might be throwing a lot at the wall and seeing what sticks, but I don't know how much those things are actually going to feature yet. You know, all of these characters they're announcing, they could just be momentary cameos. So we'll see. Yeah, I'm watching Spider-Man 3 and and The Amazing Spider-Man 2. It seemed very jam-packed with characters. And this has like twice the amount. So again, like you said, could be small cameos, could be little just references. I think the problems with those films is that the characters that are in them are completely separate, you know, so they have very separate storylines. And I think that's the real problem with those films, not necessarily the amount of characters in them, because there's definitely some MCU films with far and away more villains or more characters in them but they're connected in some way so they only tell one story yeah um amazing spider-man and spider-man 3 uh amazing spider-man 2 both sort of told three different stories in one film which seems just uh daft really yeah well only time will tell Exactly. So next up, uh, there was a trailer for Falcon and the Winter Soldier uh, coming Disney Plus March 2021. Mm -hmm. What were your thoughts on that? Again, nice to see something, really. We've not really seen much of it. We've heard things about it. It's been a quiet year, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited to see the relationship and I guess the, the chemistry with Falcon and Winter Soldier. Yeah. Not sure if they're going for like Iron Man or Captain America vibe. I don't know if they'll clash as much as those two. No, I think it's more, it looks certainly to me more buddy cop than that. And I think part of the reason they made the series is that sort of uh, dynamic between them established in Civil Mm. War and things like that, which people seem to tap into and like. So yeah, I'm I'm excited to see that, the the sort of friendly relationship. It's probably, I would say, one of my least anticipated series out of all of them. But Yeah, I can see why I say that. It seems to be the one that's most akin to just another MCU film. Whereas Mm. the other series seem to be doing something different, a little bit original. This one, it it just seems to be, a a, you know, Captain America 4 without Captain America. Yeah, I do wonder as well if there'll be any friction because the mantle wasn't passed down to Bucky. Uh, From the end of Endgame, I think Bucky knew he wasn't going to get the shield. From the things he's done, he's not really the right man for Captain America to carry on that mantle. Mm. 
and they have actually yeah. got US agent in this one uh, has been cast and I think that's going to be an interesting dynamic is the government sanctioned Captain America replacement as opposed to Cap's successor the one he chose yeah isn't that the one that runs onto the American football pitch yeah. That's the one. So interesting to see the uh, the clash between them. Uh, and I'm hoping he's mm. not painted as a straight villain because he, he's not in the comics, but uh, we'll see. So next up, they announced that Black Widow has been rescheduled again to the 7th of May 2021, but will be coming to cinemas. It's not going to be online. Okay. And then there was a Loki teaser trailer, which is being billed as a sort of time heist thriller, which has got a, a sort of great cast involving the time variance authority from the comics. Yeah, that's interesting. Mm-hmm. So what do you make of the, the teaser for that? And again, really interesting. Mm. Um, I didn't know Owen Wilson was in this until I saw the trailer. Yeah. Uh, again, I try and stay away from sort of casting news and bits like that. So that was a nice little shock. Yeah, and I think it's it will be fun to watch this sort of anti-hero of Loki hopping through time. And also, I did like the um, D.B. Cooper bit towards the end where he jumps out of the plane yeah it looks to me like that shot has been edited i do wonder if he was meant to be holding mjolnir in that scene he sort of jumps out with one arm in front of him in a very strange way uh, and is then Mm. rocketed across the sky it almost looks like they've cgi'd out mjolnir but um that wouldn't be the first time that they've changed the trailer yeah i didn't see that but they do it a lot. They did it for all of Endgame, pretty much. But yeah, no, so I'm I'm looking forward to that one. It looks a little bit different, which is, you know, that that's what I'm looking for in these Disney series is um is something a bit different to what they've mm-hmm. been doing in the films, which, you know, obviously you have to be a bit more mainstream, a bit more safe. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing these things take them in a different direction. Yeah, it's quite nice now that they've started to use the same characters and to weave it into the films, unlike things like, yeah. you know, Agent Carter or Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., where they were kind of weaved in, but just separate. Film characters made the transition to the TV shows, but they didn't yeah. go the other way very often. I think the only example of them going the other way, really, was um, Jarvis ended up yeah. in Endgame, didn't he? So uh, so next news, the What If trailer, uh, which is an animated series of alt-world tales featuring just about every voice from the MCU, and also Jeffrey Wright as You Are To The Watcher, coming next year. This, this to me, is my probably most favorite and i'm looking forward to as soon as the news came out that they were going to turn this into a tv show i thought yeah that's gonna be really good and the sort of teaser the little trailer that we had again that was i'm really excited for it yeah we've talked about the comics that you've read in the past and they do tend to be alt worlds tales or standalone what if stories mm-hmm. and things like that and so this does seem to tie into what your your interests are yeah uh which you know i'm, I'm excited as well and and i like jeffrey wright a lot so i'm excited to see him be the uh, or hear him be the watcher next couple of bits of news not really news uh shang chi has finally wrapped filming it's due out on the 9th of july 2021 you excited for shang chi yeah, I mean, as we said in the last episode, it will be nice to see the Mandarin done right. Yeah, even if they don't call him the Mandarin, it, it's going to be good to see him be that sort of more formidable presence. And an excellent actor they got for him as well. Uh, next up, there's a Ms. Marvel sizzle reel and cast announcements. Uh, that's due out in late 2021. You look forward to Ms. Marvel? So far, not really. I mean, it's not... I don't think I've seen enough. I should probably wait to see a trailer until I get excited for it. There was a, it was a bit of a, a teaser, but there wasn't much in it. But yeah, I, I would highly recommend the G. Willow Wilson run, which introduced Ms. Marvel. I think there's a reason she became quite quickly a big fan favourite character. And again, it's a different take on a, a teen superhero, which we've seen a lot of times before. But actually seeing one who is sort of Pakistani-American is an interesting take on it. Yeah. Ms. Marvel will also appear, and talking about interconnectedness between films and TV series, uh, Ms. Marvel will appear in Captain Marvel 2, as will the adult Monica Rambeau, who is introduced in WandaVision. Yeah. So yeah, there's a lot of combining there. Excited for Captain Marvel 2? Yeah, I think that once I've seen that, I'll possibly get excited for the TV show. It's just, I don't really know the character, I've not read much, I've not seen much, so I'm a little bit, not sceptical, but yeah. it doesn't really... I don't know enough, really. Well, I think Ms. Marvel will definitely be coming out before Captain Marvel. So, And then a couple of little bits of news. The Eternals uh, will be released on 5th of November. Not any more news on that from what we already knew about casting, etc. But yeah, generally quite a large and famous cast involved with that. Do you know much about The Eternals? Again, not so much. 
No, fair enough. I think they're one of the more obscure group of characters who are coming out in one of the sort of riskier ventures, uh, kind of like Guardians of the Galaxy were when they yeah. were released. So excited to see what happens there. Hawkeye series on Disney Plus will launch late 2021. Haley Steinfeld has finally been confirmed as Kate Bishop. Yeah, I think that's a good casting choice. It's great casting choice, I'd say. She matches the character. It's clearly based on Matt Fraction's run, which I absolutely love. Mm hmm. Uh, so I'm really excited about that. That's possibly one of my most anticipated that we've actually not seen any footage for at all. Mm, okay. um, so yeah, I, I'm very excited to see what they do with that one. And talking of Marvel series, there's a She-Hulk series coming to Disney+. Plus. They finally confirmed Tatiana Maslany as the lead. Yep, and not Alison Brie. No, not <laughs> Alison Brie. I don't really know where that came from. Uh <laughs> I think they said um, way back when they said they, they would like someone like the actor and the rumour mill started. Fair enough. Uh, but they've also confirmed that Mark Ruffalo will be reprising his role as the Hulk, mm -hmm. and Tim Roth will be coming back as the Abomination. Yes. I do like Tim Roth. Me too. There's a programme actually called Lie to Me. a sort of house kind of style show. Really fun to watch, and I would recommend it. But you would also recommend Fantastic Four too. so uh, <laughs> let's take that with a pinch of salt. Next up, they have confirmed that Moon Knight is moving ahead on Disney Plus as a series, as a sort of action-adventure Indiana Jones-type series. Oh, nice. Uh, they have also announced a couple more series. I'll race through these very quickly. There is a Secret Invasion series starring Samuel L. Jackson as Nick Fury and Ben Mendelsohn as Talos. There's an Ironheart series starring Dominique Thorne as Riri Williams. And there is an Armor Wars series starring Don Cheadle as War Machine coming to Disney+. Plus. Excited about any of those? I don't know enough. <laughs> <laughs> um, Fair enough. Secret Invasions, though. I've heard little bits about that. So that's, I think, the Kree would be involved in that. Uh, the Skrull. Yeah, the Skrulls. Okay, next up, Guardians of the Galaxy Holiday Special is coming to Disney+, Plus, which they are filming back-to-back <laughs> -back with the Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. So, yeah, what exactly is this? Is it like a short episode or is it like a half film have you ever seen the star wars holiday special some of it not all of it i don't blame you it's very hard to get <laughs> through and very bad it's like that there was a music video made for one of the songs off of the gardens of the galaxy soundtrack mm -hmm. gardens of the galaxy 2 that the the hoff song david hasselhoff that was the one uh, yeah disco inferno little guardians inferno something like that mm. um they made a they made a music video for that which is very heavily based on a 70s music video for i think it's actually an appearance on top of the pops of like a disco version of the star wars theme song and it's a very very odd video if you go and find the original the 70s version of it it's the most obscure there are sort of space cowboys people twirling uh lassos around their head <laughs> uh, it doesn't have anything to do with star wars and so Clearly, James Gunn is inspired by this niche and cheesy Star Wars paraphernalia that's the sort of surrounding things around Star Wars that came out at the time. So I think this is his attempt to do a, a holiday special in that vein. I reckon it will be terrible, but fantastic. Yeah, I can't imagine through Disney's quality control it will be a train wreck unless, you know, intentionally so. <laughs> On the subject of Guardians of the Galaxy, there is an I Am Groot series of shorts coming to Disney Plus as well. We don't know much more about that yeah. apart from that. Uh, Blade is still in the works, starring Maharaja Ali. Again, not much more on that apart from that. Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania <laughs> is its name. That's the best title we've had in okay. this whole section. Yeah? Quantumania. You like that? That's the, that's the one. It actually has the word Ant-Man in the title as well, which is quite nice. Quant Quant um Quantumania. They have announced that Catherine Newton has been cast as the new new Cassie Lang, the third actor to play the role. Yeah. Or possibly fourth? I don't know. And Jonathan Majors uh, has been cast as Kang the Conqueror, which is very interesting casting. I don't see how Ant-Man is going to be as formidable opponent of Kang the Conqueror as the entire Avengers, because he's quite a major villain. And so it seems strange that he's going to appear first in an Ant-Man film. I'm hoping he's not a one and done. I'm hoping he comes back for... for Wasn't more. he sort of linked with Fantastic Four? He was linked with the Fantastic Four. He was linked with the Avengers. He, he is a major, major villain in the comic books, mm. which is why I find it strange that he is going to be the villain in, a, in an Ant-Man and the Wasp film, which has so far had Yellow Jacket and that guy in the suit whose name i can't remember who was played by walter goggins in the second one yeah as I the villains it's yeah exactly so and then to go from that to kang the conqueror it's 
quite a step yeah, up. Yeah, I'm hoping that they don't waste the villain. Um, yeah. Because some films they do. Oh, definitely. So Black Panther will not be recast for Black Panther 2. That's good. Yeah, I do wonder what they're going to do there. I mean, someone take on the mantle perhaps, but yeah, we'll see who. They could pass it across to Shuri. I think that's a lot of fan ideas online. It um, was until and... very recently when she started posting some very strange things online on her Twitter uh, and has <laughs> since deactivated her Twitter account. Yeah. Um, so she's, and... there's some damage control to be done there, I think. Who was the leader of the other tribe that fought Black Panther and then they went to him for help? Yes, I know who you mean. Um, Mubaku. Mm, that's it. I think he's another one that people have sort of put forward to. Yeah, there's also uh, Nakia Lapiti and Yongo's character. Mm-hmm. And, of course, uh, Okoye. So I, I think, almost think it would be interesting to see if they called it Black Panthers and had multiple people trying to take on the role and living up to the Chadwick Boseman Black Panther. I think that would be more interesting take if you had that supporting cast all taking on a sort of similar role yeah. rather than having one direct successor. But we'll, we'll see. Mm -hmm couple of last things then so christian bale has been confirmed as the villain in thor love and thunder he is going to be playing gore the god butcher and it's being released on 6th of may 2022 that's a great name that is. he's a great villain in the comics as well from jason allen's run uh, very worthwhile reading that one if you want to get caught up before the film drops and lastly they have confirmed that a fantastic four film is in the works and that it will be directed by john watts yeah, the guy who did um, Spider-Man, so Homecoming and Far From Home. Yes. Yeah, I think he's a good choice. He's obviously brought Spider-Man in quite well. Yeah, unknown casting yet, but... Yeah, I mean, out. I think it's it, this is very early days yet. I mean, if we're, we're talking with the announcements they've made so far, I think they've already announced up to the end of 2022, so two years in line. So we're probably talking 2023 release on that, but good to know. Mm. And that's all for the Marvel Junket. A lot of news, and in DC news... Uh, Wonder Woman came out, but I haven't seen it yet because HBO Plus doesn't exist in this country. I have not seen it either. <laughs> hmm. Any other DC? Stuff? Yeah, yeah. There's rumours that Zack Snyder is looking to make Justice League R-rated, his Justice League cut, proving once again how little he understands the characters. <laughs> yeah, I... I want to see Superman drop the sea bomb, <laughs> just just randomly and out of context. Out of context, yeah. Um, and <laughs> and and the big news, of course, is actually that WB will be releasing all of their upcoming films to HBO Plus. HBO Max, isn't it? Oh, uh, yes, you're right. H, sorry, HBO Max, <laughs> uh, which has upset a lot of people in the industry. I heard you last time, but I thought I'd just allow it to slip. I'm not too sure what's going to happen there then, because contractually they were supposed to go to the big screen and yeah mm. and i don't want to see a film called godzilla versus king kong on a computer screen <laughs> yeah there's certain films you have to see in the on the big screen june for instance what's that yeah but it does mean that supposedly all of their superhero films will be coming onto the small screen including batman as well which um yeah i i don't know it seems odd so, which one of the Marvel TV shows would you say you're looking forward to the most? So, of the things we've seen footage for, then definitely WandaVision. It looks as though it's taking some inspiration from Tom King's Vision run, which is a run I really enjoyed from the comic books. So, I mean, hopefully mm -hmm. that's really good. And also Loki, both series that appear to be doing something a little bit different with the format. What about you? I would say that my most anticipated TV show would be what if mm -hmm. i like the idea of the mantles being switched around so you got like peggy carter as captain america you got t'challa as star lord yep. i mean as you said this is right up my street for me i did think that when i saw it yeah and yeah i mean as you said wandavision and loki really yeah. those sort of three main characters are people that i have enjoyed watching throughout the films yeah, and then from stuff that we've seen absolutely nothing of, Hawkeye, as I said, based on Matt Fraction's run, one of my favourite runs of comics of all time. Mm -hmm. So looking forward to that. And there's also some great martial arts action coming with stuff like Shang-Chi. And I'm looking forward to, of course, seeing Taika Waititi's follow-up to Thor Ragnarok, mm -hmm. you know, yep. as I'm a big fan 
fan of that film. So yeah, I mean, there's a lot to, to look forward to. But actually, on the subject of passing the mantle, as you said, mm-hmm. one interesting thing about a lot of the casting news that came out is that you have a new Cassie Lang, you have casting announcements of Haley Steinfeld as Kate Bishop, Hawkeye. You also have casting announcements, of course, you've got Miss Marvel, you've got Riri Williams. There are rumours of Wonder and Vision's children appearing in WandaVision, uh, mm-hmm. all of which indicates that they are moving towards a Young Avengers setup. Yeah. What are your thoughts on that? Could be a fan theory, but it definitely appears that they are going to be laying the groundwork to build on something in the future. Possibly it might not go anywhere. I think with the casting of Zochi Gomez as America Chavez, I think it was one of the last roles to be cast of the Young Avengers. With that, it just solidifies in my mind that they are definitely working towards something like that. There's just no other reason to insert that character into that role in Doctor Strange unless you're going to be working towards something like that. Well, only time will tell. Here's hoping, yeah, absolutely. So yeah, I mean, that's the end of our first bonus episode let us know if you've enjoyed this and also what you're most looking forward to is there any news that we've missed that you want us to talk about that's right we wish you a happy new year we will be back in two days with our proper episode kicking off x month so tune in then and don't forget to like and subscribe on your preferred podcasting platform Old Lang so <laughs> um, Do you want to do a goodbye, everybody? <laughs> Let's just end it there. <laughs>